Undernight in Birth is a game that has existed for quite some time now. If you were like me though, you may not have known of this game's existence until now that has come to the Nintendo Switch. Like many other games that has never really had a huge impact, the Nintendo Switch continues to be a platform where games can be resurrected and served up to a new audience of gamers who are hungry for more content on Nintendo's unique platform. Under Night, In Birth, EXE, Late Clear, no, I'm not joking, this is the actual title of the game, is no different bringing a unique anime fighting game to the platform. What's going on guys, it's Dom from the Game Looters here, bringing you another review of a Nintendo Switch game. Today we're looking at a brand new fighting game that just hit the Nintendo Switch and today we're going to be telling you if this is something that you should go out and buy right now or if this is a hard pass or skip. If it's your first time here, make sure you guys hit that beautiful subscribe button. It's the red one down below. And if you could even help us out, hit the bell as well. Also, don't forget to hit that like button. You guys have been liking the videos like crazy. And if you guys know, YouTube goes crazy when you guys like the videos and it shares it out with just everybody allowing us to be discovered more and guys we freaking greatly appreciate the love and support that you guys provide us now let's get into the review of undernight in birth exe late clear to start off you will be faced with dialogue that seemingly goes on forever but I will do my best to give you an idea of how the story is conveyed and what it entails. The story starts with a common anime trope of dimensions between our world and another world being linked. This catastrophe that plagues the Earth is called the Hollow Knight, and the dimension that the Earth has been tied with brings a slew of attackers called Voids. As people are attacked by these creatures, Humans then turn into these voids themselves, but a select few of people that the game doesn't exactly tell you how this happens, instead of just straight up just turning into these voids themselves, they in turn actually keep who they are intact and, yep, yeah, they awaken new powers. Yes, they turn into the best scenario of powered up humans with inhuman abilities, and they call themselves in birds, hence the name of the game. And with these in birds, you guessed what is next. If you guessed it, you are right. It's time to suit up and save the earth. But before you can just save the earth, of course, like good, there's always bad. There is another group of people that instead who want to save the earth, they actually want to rule it and simply just seek out power. So before the earth can be saved, you are destined to fight each other instead. And yep, during the night. No joke, daytime is reserved for alternate activities, maybe sleeping, going out with your friends, having fun, going to school, doing your day jobs, whatever it is, daytime is non-existent in this game. And if you see a lot of lighted areas, then you are probably in a indoor arena. Now, this is just a snapshot of what the story is, but the way you will really get the whole story is by playing through each character's version of the story told through their experiences through this catastrophe that's occurring. This is really where a lot of my problems with the games begin. I am all for a story fighting game. I really am. And to be honest, I'm pretty terrible at fighting games. So my enjoyment really comes from the story that I can play and the single op player offerings that are given to me. A great game or example of this is another Arc System Works game that recently came out in the past year or so, which is Dragon Ball Fighters. Now, with that one, it offered probably one of the best story modes in any fighting game in a really long time. This game 
is definitely not that. The story in Undernight is definitely unique, but I began to skip a lot of dialogue as some of it was just really unimportant, and a lot of it I could just care less. It was pretty boring, and some characters definitely outshine others. In my opinion, and I know this might sound a little bit harsh, there was probably about four really interesting characters out of the bunch. But even with those really interesting characters, there were some dialogue trees that really didn't hand themselves well into the story building of the game. So I either kind of just tuned it out by mashing A as quickly as I could to get through them just because a lot of them were just way too long. Now, one thing I think of that could have really helped this game would have been English voice acting. But along with English voice acting in the game as opposed to the Japanese with subtitles, the subtitles themselves or the English interpretation of what they were trying to say is actually, it's pretty freaking bad. So if English voice acting would have been introduced, they probably would have had to kind of redo the writing in total when they were localizing the game anyways, just to make it more interesting. But English voice acting nonetheless could have been something that could have really helped this game out. We know it's expensive, so expectations are definitely tempered there. And again, the, again, this game has pretty much existed for quite some time. So that being likely is probably not very much. Okay, so with the story behind us, at least the game has a story. Let's focus on the meat and the potatoes of the game, which is being in the fighting genre. Now, this game is going to offer you 21 unique fighters that all have different offerings to the players. You're going to find sword characters, magic users, beast wielders, and just overall powerhouses. There is going to be something for every playstyle. Combat involves three different attack buttons and directional inputs. So all the stuff that you're familiar with fighting games is all here. For fighting game veterans, you're going to be able to learn all the systems, the mechanics, and the way you can combine all of this together to do combos, and that is going to be awesome. Now, for noobs like myself and maybe you, it's a system that's really simple enough to wrap your head around and do pretty well in being able to pull off technical style combos and flurries of these combos with ease. And for people out there who don't want to dive in to really learning a system, yes, you can just button mash as well and have a smile the whole time doing it. If you care, there is also a gauge that you can build up during the matches over time or with specific button commands that will allow you to unleash combos and flashy supers all over the screen. And I really, really love them as they are literally the highlight of the matches seeing my waifus special all over the screen. So with fighting fans, overall, you're going to be satisfied. Now let's talk about the modes that are offered. First off, there is the arcade mode where you can get a unique bite-sized story for each of the different 21 characters. There is also a Chronicles mode, which is more a la a visual style novel storytelling mode that lasts somewhere around the ballpark of maybe 15 to 30 hours if you don't skip a lot of it like I did. If you are like me, you're probably closer to the 1520 versus the full 30. There's also a mission mode that'll allow you to learn. It'll basically teach you how to play the game. And there's also basic other modes that you could come to expect for fighting games like time attack mode and network mode to go play people online. In conclusion guys, this game is an addition to a game that has existed since 2012. There is a lot of padding to the story mode in about four different iterations of the game since that since 2012. Now, I don't really have any past experience with the past versions of the game, but some light research apparently uh, came to light that we get some additional story content, which is fine, take it or leave it, and a couple of new characters, which I wouldn't exactly call the character lineup robust, because there are some characters that are very, very, very generic. But we'll take it either way. If it's your first time with this game like me, 
and you are a weebish anime fan like myself, this assuming you like fighting games, this game could be a real contender to give a look at. I had a really good time with this game and I will continue to play it until other games like the second My Hero fighting game comes out later this year. And at $39.99, Undernight in Birth uh, really is a barrier to entry that's not too high. So if you're looking for a 2D, 2D anime fighter on the Switch with a story, look no further. Just temper your expectations, being here for more of the 2D fighting versus the intrinsic visual novel style storytelling because it won't blow your socks off because mine are still on. So overall, the game leaders recommend this game for things that you heard all throughout this video. And during this time, if anything I've said has interested you at all, then this is really a must buy. Now, if any time during the video you rolled your eyes or you skipped to the end, then this is a definite skip. The game probably just isn't for you as it definitely is a unique one. This will definitely be just a game that you will probably want to pass on. Probably a hard pass too. Thank you guys for sticking around through the whole video. If this has been our review of Undernight in Birth on the Nintendo Switch, let us know down in the comments down below. Are you going to buy it? What do you think of the game? And maybe are you going to wait for a sale? And for other videos just like this, check out the video on screen right now and make sure you subscribe. And we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching.